You okay with that so far? You sure? That's a big that's a big step. That's uh, step number one is just doing this. Do you got it? Now. Now's the part where you identify which one of these statements is h sub zero and which one is h sub one. Now they, it could be either one here, depending on what these symbols are. All right, it, it, there's no rule that says, "Oh, your claim is always a sub zero. It's not. There's no rule that says your claim is always a sub one. It depends on how it's worded. Notice that. Oh, well, I'll show this in, in a second. Okay, I need you to notice where the equals is. Where's the equals? In? Is it in the claim or the opposite of our claim? It's in the claim. It's in the claim. Wherever your equals is, that is your h sub zero. So have you identified which one is your h sub zero? Is it the claim or the opposite? The claim. So wherever your equals is, that's your h sub zero. And you're going to slightly restate it. So your idea is you write the claim, you write the opposite in symbols. You identify where your equals is. You're going to have an equal somewhere. It has to be there. It's either going to be here or in the opposite. You're going to rewrite this mu. This is something that's kind of new in statistics. They didn't always do this. Sometimes they left this symbol the way it is. However, in, in this kind of modern era of statistics, what we do is wherever you have the equals, you're going to completely omit the greater than. You don't care about that. What you, what you really want to show is equals 12. Yes, you're looking for the mean that's greater than or equal to 12, but according to statistics, we're going to make that equals 12. That way we don't get confused on a later step. I'll show you why when we get to that later step. But right now, you just got to buy into this right now. Identify your claim and your opposite. Wherever your equals is, just write equals. Can you do that for me? Yes, no? The other one, you leave it exactly like it is. In this case, h sub 1 has no equals. We write mu less than 12. So just a, a very small recap. You read a claim, you identify whether you're dealing with proportions on one hand or means on the other hand. That's p or that's mu. Here we're dealing with a, a mu. You write the claim in some uh, symbolic notation. We got that right here. You write the opposite of the claim. You have to be very good at that, don't you? Then we translate this. Which one is h sub 0? Which one is h sub 1? You look for the equals. This has the equals. That means my claim is h sub 1. I just rewrite it without this greater than or equal to, just with the equal to. That's just the formality of writing statistics in this age. Okay, that's what we do. Uh, some other books, older books, don't have that. The opposite in this case was our h sub 1 because we have no equality statement. There's only been an equality statement on one of these, these pieces here. So we just simply rewrite it as h sub 1. We have mu is less than 12. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Now, notice something. That's good. That's everybody. Notice something. If I didn't have at least, if I had more than, if I had more than, that wouldn't be there. Do you see that? That would actually be here. Does that make sense? That would no longer be h sub 0. That would be h sub 1, and that would be h sub 0. You with me? Do you remember me saying that um, in order to prove a claim right, it's got to be stated as h sub, which one? h sub 1. It's got to be stated as h sub 1. It's got to be stated as h sub 1. Because you're, you're trying to prove h sub 0 wrong, and that, that statement proves h sub 1 correct. This statement, our claim, is h sub 0. We're never going to be able to prove that right. We'd never be able to prove it equal to 12. It's impossible. You can't do it. Not with statistics. Okay. So we, we wouldn't a actually ever be able to prove that claim. It's stated incorrectly for us to prove it. If we wanted to say that the fluid is greater than 12 ounces, we could prove or disprove that statement. But we can't prove it equal to 12 ounces. That would be stated incorrectly. If you wanted to prove that statement right. Do you guys get, kind of get the picture? All right. Let's try a couple more. We'll try three more. Of course, I really need you to get this before we move on, right? Because if you don't get this, you're stuck. Uh, there's no way you can get any further. So let's try a few more of these things. Let's say uh, the proportion of male CEOs is greater than 0.5. The proportion of 
proportion of male CEOs is greater than point 0.5. I also want to show you this in this example, that's why I give this one. The proportion of male CEOs is greater than 0.5. Are we dealing with proportions or means? Proportion. Clearly because it says proportion up there. But check this out. What if I worded it a little bit different? You should still be able to see that we're dealing with proportions. I could word it like this. Most CEOs are male. Right there. You're going to see that a lot. What's most mean? More than, what? More than what? Half. Half, Half is 50% or 0.5. Are you with me on that? So most CEOs are males means this right here. The proportion of male CEOs is greater than 0.5. So if you ever see most, most means more than 50%. Are you, are you clear on that? Most means the proportion is more than or greater than 0 0.50, 0.50, 0.50. Okay, well you've already determined that we're dealing with a proportion, so are we dealing with mu still or with p? So we need to identify our claim and our opposite. Let's start with the claim first. We always start with the claim. What's, what's actually given to us? So the proportion of male CEOs is greater than 0.5. What letter are we using again? P. Because we're dealing with a proportion. Good, and we're trying to make a statement about the population proportion. P. Can you write proportion of male CEOs is greater than 0.5, how would you write it? Would it be equal to, a greater than or equal to, a less than or equal to, a greater than or a less than? Which would you pick? There's only several, there's, there's a few options here, right? You could do equal to, not equal to. Greater than, less than. Greater than, equal to, or less than, equal to. There's six options that you have. Now, only one's the correct option, but those are the six symbols you'll be using. Which one was it? Okay. Okay. Greater than what? Point five zero because this means most. You need to be really good at reading this or reading this and getting this. Most CEOs are male. Hey, most. More than 50% are male. That should have you okay with that one so far. Yeah? All right. Now, can you write the opposite of that claim? Both of them. What are you going to put? Less than or what? Oh, there's got to be equality somewhere, right? There has to be an equality somewhere because H sub 0 has the equality. It's got to be somewhere. In our case, which is the H sub 0, the claim or the opposite? So notice how it changes. It's not the same all the time, right? This one in, in this case, this is H sub 0. This one is H sub 1. Let's rewrite h sub 0 first. h sub 0 has the equality. The equality is right here, so we write what, what now? P equals. Good. We kind of ignore this part once we find the equality. We just write equals to make it a simplified version of, of this, uh, this scenario. Now, as far as h sub 1, we don't change that ever. h sub 1 stays exactly the same. It doesn't have an equals to it. P greater than 0.50. Notice how your claim, listen, how your claim is your h sub 1. Here's how this would work. We're going to be stating h sub zeros and trying to prove them wrong. If we, tr if we prove our h sub 0 wrong, we prove our h sub 1 right. Does that make sense? If we prove our h sub 1 right, look what we just proved. We just proved our claim. Do you see how that would prove our statement if we state our claim as h sub 1? No? Yes. Iffy? Some people are iffy. The only thing you can do is disprove h sub 0. That's all this whole process does is disprove h sub 0. You can either disprove it or fail to disprove it. Failing to disprove something doesn't prove it right. It's like guilty versus not guilty. You can find it guilty, disprove it. Or you can find it not guilty, fail to disprove it. Guilty means they got caught and they're, they're punished, right? Not guilty doesn't mean they didn't do it, there's just not enough evidence. Do you see the difference there? That's what you can do with h sub 0. 
you're going to be testing h sub 0. So if you test h sub 0 and find it wrong, that means h sub 1 is right. If you can find h sub 1 right, that means you prove this statement. If your statement's set up as your claim, you just proved your claim. Compare that to this. Remember, you can only test h sub 0, not h sub 1. So let's say you tested h sub 0. If you found it wrong, your whole claim is completely wrong, right? You didn't prove that statement at all. This is your claim. If you found it not wrong, did you find it right? You said nothing. You didn't say anything about that. Found it wrong, you proved this, how that your statement was wrong. It's what you were trying to prove is completely incorrect. That's not good. Right? But if, you, if you're trying to prove the statement correct, well, you can't do it here. There's never going to be enough evidence to prove something right, just like there's never enough evidence to prove someone innocent. Can you ever prove someone innocent? No. It's either they're guilty or not guilty. Here, you have not guilty, sure, but it doesn't prove it right. It doesn't mean that they actually didn't do it. It just means there wasn't enough evidence to say that they did. Do you see the difference between these two things? I sure hope that you do, because that's a really an important piece of information. That's how hypothesis testing works. Are there any questions on it before we get going? If you're not clear on it, now is a perfect time for questions. You got time. So if you do all the math, right, and for the first one, and you figure out that the mean is actually like 11 ounces, but we're looking for, for exactly 12, basically, right? Yes. But if we, if we find out it's actually 11 ounces, it, and we're looking for 12 or greater... Then it wouldn't prove this wrong. So what would we... Nothing. That's the point. Right? It doesn't tell you anything. But we... But we know that it Now, let me say this. You're looking for this, right? If you said the mean of fluid is exactly 12 ounces in a can, that would be equals, this would be not equals, but still wouldn't say anything about that. You'd have to test the claim the mean fluid is different than 12 ounces. You have to test that claim. That way you could prove the opposite correct or incorrect. Uh, sorry, you could prove the opposite incorrect. That would, that would prove your claim for you. You can never prove anything about h sub 0. You can only prove things about h sub 1 by disproving h sub 0. That's the whole idea. I know it's reverse logic, right? Because we're, we're used to going, oh, we want to prove this. We're going to go directly at it, hammer at it. Nope, not with statistics. You go like a backdoor approach. You state it kind of what you don't want. You state the opposite, and you go about uh, disproving your, your h sub 0 to prove that claim. It's a weird way of doing it, right? It's like an indirect proof in mathematics. Did that answer your question? The 11 won't do anything here. Sure, it is, but it's not what you asked. This is only gonna, going to uh, work with what you specifically asked it. That's it. That's why we have to ask the right questions to get the right answers. You guys ever seen iRobot? Yes. Mm -hmm. And at one point he goes, ah, now that's the right answer. And then he shuts off. And you're like, oh, come on, jerk. That's the right answer. Give me an answer. <laughs> well, that, that's kind of how this works, right? If you don't ask the right question, or he says, that's the right question. He doesn't give an answer. If you don't ask the right question, you're not going to get the right answer. That's what this whole thing is about. OK, the mean weight of betas. <laughs> mean weight of betas is at most eight point nine. 